What's up guys, welcome back to another EO Online video. In this video, I'll be going over the mechanics and the details and the fit and the clone and all that that goes into soloing a Garista's forward operation base in high sec. Now, if you have never heard of these before, they're a, if you're a miner, you've probably had to deal with these in the past because the way that these work, and you can find them in the agency under encounters and then pirate strongholds, but the way this works is they're basically a structure a pirate structure that has no shield, no armor, just has structure hit points, and it'll uh, populate in system. Now, as a miner back in high sec, the first thing I would do every single day would check the agency and see if there is a str stronghold in system. Because if there is, there are the the rats will send out rat mining fleets to the asteroid belts. If you or your miners go to the asteroid belt to mine and you warp there and you see these adventures and stuff like that, they the adventure rats will immediately warp off and call a response fleet, which will warp right on top of you. And these are not normal rats, right? These are diamond rats. And so they're programmed to kind of simulate player fleets. So you will have tackle, you have lodgy, you'll have long range, and you know, you'll have the, the whole thing. And I've seen, I've, I've heard people, I know people that have lost orcas. I know people who have lost entire, um, you know, fleets of uh, procure skips, you know, like all the things, right? And um, they don't, and then also they, um, They'll just be random uh, diamond rat fleets uh, that will fly around. They don't really go to combat sites that I've noticed. But as far as the disrupting mining in the system, you're probably, if you've heard of these, then you probably either have dealt with them as a miner or you've heard of them because a miner has asked somebody to kill this thing. So how does this thing work? If you warp to it, then you'll warp zero. The only way you can actually warp to it is if it's in system like this one, and then you have to like warp to location. Um, once you warp to location, you'll warp zero onto the structure. And after a few seconds, the response fleet will show up on grid. The response fleet is going to be scaled to what actually comes to grid player wise. So the more people you bring in a fleet, the bigger the response fleet and the more time it takes to take it down. That's why most people prefer to do these solo because it gives you a, the very smallest amount of response fleet to deal with. And in most cases, you can just ignore the response fleet altogether and just work on the structure. Now, whenever we warp out to this, I'll kind of like go over, you know, priority targets. But for the most part, the most important, the most important thing about the Garistas is the target jamming. We don't really care if the forward operation base, it's going to be target jamming us all the time and it's going to be nuding us out. So we're going to be basically completely neutered out the entire time and we'll be uh, uh, target jammed for the most part from the forward operating base. The complicated part is there'll be blackbirds. Blackbird, if you get the blackbird spawn, and I've seen it as far as like I've had like three or four blackbirds in the response fleet, those are going to be long range uh, cruisers that are going to also target jam you so between them and the forward operating base it's going to be very difficult to keep the targeting the targeting lock on the structure itself and so usually i try to prioritize taking blackbirds down if i get, got them but they also usually come with ospreys which is logi so really the target priority if you see a, an Osprey in the response fleet, you want to take the Osprey down. And it's going to be a pain because you're going to be dealing with target jam and they're going to be dropping your targets. But the idea is just get that Osprey down. If the Os When the Osprey is down, take down any Blackbirds that are on grid. And then you'll probably want to also work on the Kestrels. These are frigates. They will be um, flying really, really fast around you. And they will be webbing and warp disrupting you. Um, you really don't have to worry about them until the end when you're ready to warp off. But I like to tend to just get rid of them um, at the beginning. But um, you can leave them up if you want, just in case anybody else comes on grid with you and just trying to like you know mess with uh, or steal the reward or whatever the case may be. The Kestrels can go and kind of mess with them. Um, but if you see Caracals, usually Caracals, all the Caracal rats on grid, they don't really do a whole lot of damage because we're going to be tanking, out tanking them, and things like that. So. Let's go ahead and go over the clone for this. We're going to be using high grade Nirvana Alpha through Omega. We're going to be using the shield management 705, uh, capacitor management 805, shield operation 905, and rapid launch um, 1005. 
This is going to be basically shield capacity and things like that. Next thing we'll do is we'll go over the fit and what you uh, break points you need to hit in order to uh, be successful and to survive. And then I'll go over actual strategy and what we'll be doing when we get out there. All right, going over the fit real quick. So a few things we need to make sure that we accomplish with this fit. And since we're passive tank, and the thing to realize, we're going to be nuded out pretty much the entire time while taking down this structure. We're going to be nuded out, we're going to be wed, we're going to be warp disrupted, all of that. So in order to tank the fleet and also just take down the structure, we're going to want 400 over 400 HP a second for our shield recharge. We want as high thermal shield resist as possible, and then we want uh, as far over uh, 600 combined DPS without sacrificing any um, shield recharge. So going over the weapon system real quick, we're running Caldari Navy cruise missile launchers. We're running cruise missiles instead of torpedoes. They have less damage, but we have better range with them and a faster time to target. So if there's a situation where we're having to take down like the Blackbirds, Blackbirds are going to be um, target jamming us. The Gila's will be target jamming us. We don't really care if the structure of the forward operating base itself is target disrupting us because we just want that targeted the whole time. So in the case that we do get um, Blackbirds or other things that are like target disrupting us, you know, we can try to take them down. But most of the time, if it's like we have a bunch of Blackbirds and Gila's with you know, double Osprey, double Logi. It's going to be almost impossible to take um, a lot of the fleet down solo. So we're going to just try to ignore them and it's going to get tedious, right? If you've got a lot of things uh, target jamming you, you're going to have to basically wait for gaps. Your ogres are going to end up doing a lot of the work on the structure and your job with the missiles is essentially you're going to be keeping the timer paused. So if you do have a bad configuration like that, what you can do is once you warp into the structure you see what fleet comes on if, if you see double most of the time if i see double osprey um I, what i do is a warp to the structure and i go in a line to a station once the fleet drops in if i see double osprey i'm just gonna um jump back out and try to re-roll the the structure hit the structure like once with a missile and then you know in 30 minutes it'll uh, respawn you can come back and you know try again but that's the reason why we're running cruise missiles. We need um, the Blackbirds are going to sit like 34 kilometers out, so we want to be able to hit them. We're running a uh, Black Eagle um, Link Augmenter just to get our range a little bit better with the drones in case we do have to throw the overs, you know, quite far out. Our mid slots, we're going to put them A-type thermal shield amplifiers to help us get our shield resist up. Um, Republic Fleet Shield Rechargers helping with the shield recharge rate. And then Caldar Navy Large Shield Extenders to increase basically our in overall shield pool and also some of our recharge as well. In the lows, we're going to go with a damage control. This helps further our resistances. We're going to be running ballistic control systems to get more damage out of our missiles. And then we're going to be running three power relays, which is basically going to take the power from the capacitor and shove it into our shield recharge we're also running large core defense extender twos and all the rigs which also further gives us better shield recharge rate with all that being said we're also running federation federation navy ogres give you a an idea of that so yeah federation navy ogres is what we're going to be running this with these ogres these both these ogres plus your cruise missiles on the structure will keep it paused indefinitely as long as you don't have any other issues so once you get to that point, it's just kind of a waiting game. And then we're running uh, Inferno Fury cruise missile, which is regular Tech 2s for that. The micro jump drive, what this is for is once the, st the structure is going to be what's going to be nuding us out. So once the structure blows, we're going to start um, building our cap up again. And this is why by running this mod, we don't have to worry about taking down the Kestrels. The Kestrels are going to be frigates. They're going to be warp um are going to be webbing us and warp disrupting us so once the structure goes down and we get a little bit more cap up we're just going to mi um, micro jump drive away from them and then warp off that's our uh that's basically our exit strategy with all that being said we're going to go and warp out to location and uh, show you what this kind of looks like and how to set it up and how to get it going all right let's go ahead and head out we're going to open up the agency and go to the encounters and then the pirate stronghold and then Current system, warp location. So the very first part of the run is a little tedious. What we're gonna do is when we get there, we're gonna warp zero onto the structure. I'm gonna align to a structure in system. 
Yeah, I'm going to wait basically until the response fleet lands. We're going to look at look at kind of what we get. And um, if it's something that I don't like, if it's like a lot of Blackbirds, um, Gila's, Double Osprey, I'm probably going to uh, try to re-roll it. But if it's manageable in most cases, we can uh, we can deal with it because the fleet we don't really care about killing because we can just tank them. All right, we're gonna go ahead and align, and I'm gonna go ahead and hold over, hold my mouse over warp zero. We should get three quarter speed, three four speed, by the time the response fleet lands, and I have multiple overviews up so I can see type really easily and we're already being neutered just waiting for the response fleet to come in what do we get hopefully we do we get out of here before I'm hoping okay so three kestrels not great where's the rest of them So we got a battleship, two ravens, not bad. Manageable. No logi. Which is good. So we'll go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and just orbit. And then we're going to leave everybody as they are. And we're going to go ahead and get the ogres out get the missiles on and we'll be basically just chilling we're only getting warp disrupted from two of the cat for the kestrels now which is fine with the reason why we have the uh, micro jump drive we're just gonna hang out and be neutered until the uh, structure goes completely down and then once we get a little bit of cap left afterwards we will just micro jump away from them and then bounce that is the strategy this is the time consuming part but what's nice is um we can basically just tank all of this so we don't have to worry about too much here we just want to make sure we keep an eye on this repair timer as long as we have the ogres and all of our missiles on the structure it'll stay paused and everything like that once the damage actually gets going here we've already done three percent so Instead of making you guys like sit through this entire bit, I'll probably just come back and near the end after it blows up and show how the exit goes. That way, um, you can kind of see the entire process. The ravens are going to sit out there or whatever, but we could technically kill the ravens just to man, bring the DPS a little, the DPS off the field a little bit, but I'm not really too worried about it. I'm going to try to just get the structure down and everything. So we'll uh, jump forward in time to the exit strategy. All right, so we got about 3% left on the structure, and then it'll blow up. What I've already actually started doing is aligning to the station that I'm going to be going to. So we're already kind of in the uh, the correct heading here. As far as the loot goes that comes out of these, these usually drop um, BPCs and stand up uh, T1 or faction modules, so structure stuff. But um, what I'll probably do is we're going to be waiting for a capacitor. we got to have a, like 700 and almost 800 units of capacitor in order to use a micro jump drive. So we're going to have a little time after it goes down. But I'll bookmark basically the wreck and then I usually come back with something that can pick them up because... Uh, they're not going to fit in. They never fit in the, the rattlesnake. And so a lot of, and we can, if we wanted to, we can, you know, kill these battleships and whatever, which we might, considering that we're going to have quite a bit of time, about 1%. Now, so we should see the pop here pretty soon. There it is. And so I'm going to bookmark this. I'm just going to save location. Save that wreck. And now essentially we're going to be just stacking up capacitor. 
We don't have to worry about um, target jam either. I'm gonna go and bring in the drones and we're just gonna mess with these uh, battleships a little bit. Let that blow up. Usually um, it's a good idea to have like an alt or something to come get the actual loot itself. After everything is uh, destroyed. I'm actually just curious about what these uh, torps are gonna do to this raven. A lot of travel time being 100k out but we've got quite a bit of uh we've got about 500 units of capacitor so we'll be able to uh take off here pretty soon i want to have enough capacitor to do the micro jump and then enough capacitor to actually get all the way to station so the station we're going to is the uh one that's only like 2.1 AU away. So the idea is we want to be heading in the right direction, pointed directly at it, because our speed will maintain through the micro jump. And really, this is just for, I mean, if you're carrying, you can carry like hobgoblins. I've done it before too. You can carry like hobgoblins. You can even carry like drop a little bit of tank and carry like a web where once the structure goes down, you can actually web each one of these at a time and then the hobgoblins can take them down even the heavies but one web is usually not fast enough to bring them down because these guys these guys are moving pretty quick <clears throat> so all right we got about a thousand so what i'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and micro jump and then i am gonna roll over here and go and hold over warp zero the second we actually move we want to initiate warp all right there we go so they're gonna be coming at us they're kind of lost in the soft right now which is fine hopefully he'll web us yeah so he came right at us but he didn't have a he went way out there and that is that that's how you get out of there what we'll do is we'll dock up and another thing you can do too is like you can dock up and like go back out with a um a pod um and just kind of wait for the despawn but i don't remember how long the despawn is for those guys but uh once you're out of pocket it should despawn just like any normal uh combat site so we'll get in here we'll dock up and then i'm going to jump into a pod and then we'll um head back out to bookmark and uh just to illustrate that a little bit you want to give it some time for it to uh, for the, all the guys to kind of despawn, but um, in most cases, you can go drop off the. Uh, so you can do what we just did. You can drop off the rattlesnake and get into like a. Um, you want something that's like can hold at least twenty five thousand cubic meters, or something like that, um, and then go back out there, loot the wreck, and then uh, head back. But I usually just wait for all the mobs to actually leave and all that. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what dropped out of this particular wreck on an appraisal. So right here, we had a heavy, a stand-up heavy energy neutralizer, a stand-up stasis webifier, and a stand-up single amplifier. So all in all, by value, Jita, 69,121,000 cell value. And as you can see, it weighs 24,000 cubic meters so you just want to make sure that you know you take out what you can out there in order to uh to pick it up and also if you go over to the agency again you can see that the uh, warpable is gone as well so i'm gonna go and warp back out there we'll see if these guys have despawned yet i've already gone out there once so they're still there but they were like <clears throat> really far away from the wreck so that's usually what they do is they'll start moving out and away um from it so ideally if you're going to go in with something to pick up the loot you know pick something fast i usually take a crane even though it takes usually like two trips but it allows me to just kind of get in and get out so yeah see they're all still here and uh they're a little close by so but they're starting to warp off right there see and they're warping out in a way so they can get closer to where i'm at so that's usually just enough time to loot everything and get back out. 
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys were curious about how to take down fobs and uh, stay alive and just tank them, and uh, you know the you also get extra rewards and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I would say for you know about thirty minutes um, of time, it's a uh, pretty good uh, money if you sell all everything. You know, it uh, you can pay for the rattlesnake. You know, pretty quick, and as long as you don't have other people like kind of purposely kind of screwing you over and everything, then it's pretty much good to go. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will uh, see you in the next one. Peace out.